Hello everyone, welcome to the Explorer Returns YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be trying something different. This is a new little series I'm going to be starting while we're on lockdown here in the UK to try and keep everybody active on YouTube on this channel. This is a true story that I'm going to be reading to you tonight. In no way is this fake staged or written i am going to be explaining this story from the top of my head from what i can remember which is pretty well i can remember this very well because it's not something you would forget let's begin in the early stages of 2018 me and my cousin decided to drive down to a location in new haven of east sussex there, we will be meeting my girlfriend, exploring with Lucy, and three others, Extreme Urbex, and another two which do not have any online social medias, so cannot be named. The location we were going to be visiting tonight, it was an evening, I just finished work, it was a Friday evening. The location we were visiting was an abandoned set of World War II tunnels, been abandoned for many, many years. It's also a very popular spot in this area of the UK. So we had previously already been inside these tunnels beforehand. However, my cousin Daniel, who was traveling with me, had not. He was driving. I was in the passenger seat. He had never been here. I was excited to show him this location because he did have an obsession with tunnels and these were absolutely perfect and they were local so we decided to explore them. As I said, me and Lucy have been here three times before, maybe even more than that. So we've all met, we've all parked up just down the road, we walk up the main road, up heading towards the tunnel entrance, we make our way off the road and up the hill towards the gate which was wide open we've gone inside everything seems normal we proceed through the tunnels bearing in mind these tunnels are about at least a mile and a half long could be more who knows a lot of the tunnels have been bricked up over the years to prevent people from going too deep or even getting in at all but someone eventually always breaks down the walls and carries on so in these tunnels, right at the very end, now at this point we've been exploring through the tunnels non-stop for around half an hour and we have not reached the end. As I said earlier, me and my girlfriend have explored this place before so we knew what was in here. At the very end of the tunnel system there is a set of stairs that lead all the way up basically to ground level. As you go further into the tunnel from the start, you go further into the hillside. So at the very end, there's a really long set of stairs that lead up to nothing. It's just a room. I think at one point it was probably an access. But as of today, it's just a room, a big open room. So when I went there beforehand, I noticed at the very bottom of the stairs that there was a gate halfway up the stairs that had been completely closed. I tried to open it. It wouldn't budge. It had been locked for a very long time if not since the place was abandoned in the 70s, maybe even less than that. So there was absolutely no chance of it ever opening because it was completely rusted. It even took three of us to attempt it and it could not open. This is beforehand, should I say. Skipping forward to the day that we were there with my cousin Daniel, when we got to the bottom of the stairs, to my surprise, the gate was open. I have absolutely zero idea on how or when this was opened although i knew that it was basically impossible to open it when i was there previously but it was open so i decide to go over the little hole in the stairs i proceed up the stairs my girlfriend decided to wait downstairs along with my other friend's girlfriend the women stayed at the bottom me extreme urbex and the other person decided to proceed up the stairs. We went to the top. Seemed normal. We had a look. 
We decided to come back down. Halfway through, my cousin Daniel decided he wanted to come up. So I was like, go for it. Go and have a look up there. I'll meet you back down here in a moment. So he's walked up there on his own. I went back downstairs to see if my girlfriend was okay, as I knew she was a little bit anxious about the situation, being so far underground and being at least half an hour away from the access point. Until I heard my name being shouted by the other person who does not have a name. I turned around, I looked up the stairs, and my cousin Daniel had collapsed on the stairs. I rushed up the stairs to aid them in this situation. I have absolutely no idea what was going on at this point. Extreme Urbex decided to go back downstairs and look after the ladies while I went up and helped Daniel, since he was my cousin at the end of the day. I've gone up there. He's completely out. There was absolutely no sign of him even, you know, didn't even look like he was breathing, so I was absolutely scared. I was almost crying at this point. I was that scared, and I don't cry, ever. But it was very, very scary. So I'm shouting his name, asking him to wake up. He doesn't respond. No movement. But I could see at this point that he was breathing. So I thought maybe he hit his head on something because the tunnels are pretty low down. I shake him about to try and wake him up. I slap his face slightly just to, you know, let him know that we're there. All of a sudden, his eyes opened. And this is where the most horrible experience I've ever had to go through in my entire life things are about to get extremely bad so his eyes have opened and I'm literally 10 centimeters away from his face and there was no whites in his eyes it, they was completely black it literally looked like someone had placed two black marbles in his eye sockets there was no eyes there was no eyeball it's just black I should point out at this point that this story is 100% legit. If you wish to ask my cousin himself, you can go and follow him on Instagram at dannychase95. So, carrying on. There's no whites of his eyes. His teeth are showing. His mouth is open and he's dribbling. At this point, it became to me that he was extremely hostile and this was no longer my cousin. He was growling at me, staring into my soul with his black eyes. At this point, I ran off down the stairs to get my girlfriend and he growled at me from the top of the stairs and just kept doing this. I didn't know what to do. Extreme Urbex goes up. He collapses back down to the stairs again while uh, Extreme Urbex approaches him. So he's back out again. So I have instructed the other explorer with no social media name to escort my girlfriend and his girlfriend out of the tunnels as soon as possible. After they depart, I run back up the stairs. Me and Extreme Urbex took each end of Daniel. We lifted him up and we started making our way towards the access. I was incredibly scared, but at the same time, I had to do this for my cousin's sake because we were so far away from the access. There is absolutely no chance we could leave him there ever. I would never consider it. We had to get him out. So, we're carrying him through the tunnels. He's popping in and out of consciousness. Thankfully, his eyes had gone back to normal. But However, he was extremely aggressive and hostile towards us both. We put him down because he started to make a massive fuss. This is where he tried to bite me. His eyes went black again. He tried to bite my hand. I dropped him. I didn't want to, but I had to because he actually tried to bite my hand. At this point, I'm actually freaking out and I'm saying to Extreme Urbex that I don't know I can do this. I don't think I can do this at all. We have, we, I don't know what to do. Should we call the police? Should we call an ambulance? We decided not to because at the end of the day we were trespassing on a very dangerous property and we didn't want to put the emergency services life at risk by coming into these really old tunnels. So we decided to just man up and just get him out. So we've lifted him up again. I've put his hood over his head so I can't see his face anymore. This made me feel more comfortable. After 25 minutes of carrying him through the tunnels, 
He finally got to the gate where he managed to climb out himself. He came back into consciousness and climbed underneath the gate himself. We're outside and he comes back to normal. I ask him what happened. He didn't remember. All he could remember was looking up the stairs in this tunnel, walking up, and then nothing. Apparently it was sleep, he said. He doesn't remember nothing. It was like he just fell asleep. And I said, what about the times where you tried to bite me or you were growling at me? He told me to stop being stupid. I questioned him on why he thought I was being stupid and he was said, why would I do that for? And I said, you did. And the other explorers backed me up on this. He did try to bite me. He was shocked and didn't remember. I think he didn't actually believe me. At this point, I actually started to have a very severe argument with Extreme Urbex and another two explorers. They didn't understand my emotion for this situation. In the end, I had to run off and start punching a tree because the anger and upset inside me was just so great I didn't want to take it out on anybody else. Thankfully, we all managed to sort things out for the sake of my cousin. At this point, I was extremely scared because I was not insured on my cousin Daniel's car to drive us home, so he had to. So we decided to call it a night. My girlfriend went home. The other two explorers went home. Extreme Urbex also went home, leaving me and Daniel. I've got in the car extremely nervous. I didn't know what to say. There was nothing to say. I was shocked at what had happened tonight. I was almost not believing it myself. We were talking for around five minutes in the car about the situation and he had no idea what he'd done, but he apologized to me anyway. I asked him, was he faking it? despite knowing that it's impossible to fake something like this. He replied, no. We're driving along the road in the pitch black. All of a sudden, my cousin Daniel slammed on his brakes. And I've gone forward and almost headbutted the dashboard of the car despite wearing my seatbelt. I said, what happened? He replied, I've just hit somebody. And I said, what? What do you mean you've just hit somebody? He said, someone just run out in the road wearing all black and I have just hit them. We need to go back and see if they're okay. We need to call an ambulance. And I said, Daniel, we did not hit anybody. Stay in the car. He ignored me, got out, looked around. I also got out and lit up a cigarette because the stress was too much. There was nobody there. We checked the front of the car zero damage. He hallucinated this. There was no person. Something in his mind must have triggered him to think this, but I never saw anybody. I had my eyes on the road the whole time. Bearing in mind, we're in the middle of nowhere at half past one in the morning. It's impossible there could have been any person out at this time anyway. It was Daniel imagining things or something in him. I don't like talking about this type of stuff because I know it exists, but I don't want to know it exists. So we get back in the car and at this point I was very tempted to just walk home, even if it took me three hours walk like it would have done. I wanted to do it, but he insisted that we just drive home and he'll be fine. We leave where we were parked and continue driving home. I was incredibly nervous now. I didn't want to be there at all. When we've gone past the Amex Stadium in Brighton, there are street lights on this motorway. The whole motorway was lit up. We could see very clearly. All of a sudden, Daniel said to me, why are the street lights flickering? I've looked up at the street lights as we're driving. They're not. He said, yes, they are. I was like, no, they're not. And he was like, look, Look, that one right there, it's flickering. And I was like, Daniel, it's not flickering. I told him to pull over. He said, no, we need to get home. We're almost there now, just wait. From this point, 
of the journey, things seemed normal. However, we didn't speak. Nobody spoke. I was too scared to even look at him, just in case I saw those horrible black eyes staring at me again while we were driving down the road. I didn't want to do it, so I just looked out the window and stayed looking at the window the whole way home. We pull into my road and I get out and I tell him to drive safe to get home. He says, okay. He drives off. That was that. I texted him the next morning. He said he had nightmares all night. Too scared to even go to the toilet in the night because he thought someone was there. Things in his head. When he falls asleep, a nightmare happens and he wakes up again. I will never know what happened that night. But if you ask anybody that was there with me that night, they will all confirm to you that everything I have just described in this story is 100% legit. As my loyal subscribers know, I do not fake videos. I do not stage videos. I do not milk videos to make them sound worse than they are. That is exactly what happened. I will never forget. And to this day, me and my girlfriend and Daniel all still talk about it. Daniel himself wants to go back to the tunnels to see what was there. I declined this offer and politely said there is absolutely no chance that I'm taking you there ever again. However, he still insists. So, I will make a YouTube video on this subject when the UK lockdown is lifted. Me, Daniel and my girlfriend will go to these tunnels again and I will record this situation. My girlfriend Lucy actually had him on film doing this with his eyes being black and growling. She has it on film but we never released it out of respect to my cousin Daniel because this was not him. He has also given us permission to use this footage, but I will not upload it just yet until we have gone back to the tunnels. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. It felt weird talking about it again. It sent shivers down my spine a couple of times. I will do some more of this subject or other stories that I have witnessed in the past in another episode if you are new to this channel then hit the subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss what's coming out in the few months hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and please leave a comment down below on what you thought of this subject i will point out i do not care if you think this was fake or i'm lying i don't care i know what i saw my girlfriend knows what i saw and most importantly, Daniel knows what happened. He just doesn't like to speak about it. I will interview him on this subject later on in the coming months. The coronavirus has left us. Thank you for watching. And goodbye.